Hey guys, welcome back to Max Mammals. I'm Max and I'm an urban photographer in Gothenburg, Sweden. In this video I thought we should talk a little bit about urban photography itself and uh, why I call myself an urban photographer. I have been asked in real life uh, by some people what kind of photography I, I do and it's always a bit tricky to describe it because people think I do like cityscape photography or architecture photography or something like that when in fact uh, urban photography as a term is a bit of a cop out and I'll explain why in this video so let's get the cracking okay I think the easiest way to explain urban photography is to compare it to some other kind of photography and in this case landscape photography if you think about um, Photographers that go into the, a landscape like a mountain or a stream or a forest or a, up on a hill or a, uh, There are two kinds of photographers that do that and uh, The first one is the landscape photographer and the second is the uh, wildlife photographer and as you can imagine um, the landscape photographer has a completely different subject uh, interest than the wildlife photographer. The landscape photographer wants uh, pictures of the mountain, the streams, the forests and stuff like that, while the uh, wildlife photographer, while he is in the same landscape as the landscape photographer, wants to shoot uh, deer or bears or... Uh, not bears, be bears. How do you say that in English? I mean, come on, I'm Swedish. Uh, bears. Okay, they want to shoot moose, bears, um, animals of any kind, squirrels, rats, you know. The animal photographer has a specific subject matter that he's after in a landscape, while the landscape photographer has a different kind of subject that he's after, or she. Uh, let's not get sexist but uh, so if you move that uh, that uh, model over to the city and the urban photographer is the landscape photographer and the street photographer is the animal photographer do you, does that make sense the landscape photographer wants um, shoots um, the buildings the streets the bridges the skyline everything while the street photographer wants to shoot the people in the streets uh, coming in and out of the buildings crossing over the bridges and stuff like that and i think that's the main difference between urban photography and street photography and as i said before it's also a bit of a cop out because uh, in my mind uh, street photography has some ethical issues in that I really can't bring myself to sort of stick a camera into a person's face and snap a picture so that I can post something on Instagram or on Facebook or um, on a website somewhere. Uh, I have a really hard time doing that and I really want to have uh, work with a, a human subject uh, so that both people know how an image is going to be used, what it's going to be used for, and uh, yeah, so I have a hard time doing street photography, so I call myself an urban photographer to get away a bit from, from that whole uh, thing. And then I do shoot people as an urban photographer, and that's the, where I come down to acknowledging that uh, it's a bit of a hypocritical cop out because I shoot people without their permission. Um, it's just that I tell myself that I don't make them my subject. I go into square in a city. I marvel at all the beautiful buildings uh, uh, around me. I try to find a good angle to shoot uh, my experience of that square in that uh, city. But uh, of course, uh, the square is going to be full of people. But I tell myself that uh, those people are in the public space and I'm not focusing on them. So it is entirely incidental uh, whether they are there or not. Because the people are only important as uh, scale objects. 
you know they give the viewer that is experience and uh, this exp experiencing the square through my lens uh, a sense of scale like, like this is how big it is because uh, i know the average size of a human and uh, oh look at that statue it's huge or look at that building it's tiny uh, you know because uh, with people in the scene uh, people get the viewer of the image gets a sense of scale that is that is different that is markedly different than if i were to go into that square uh, look around and see like a woman sitting in a park bench reading a book and looking funny and then i without permission go close to that woman and basically capture that uh, funny expression and then post it on instagram going haha look at this uh, i haven't worked with uh, that subject even if that subject is my main focus so i'm really not comfortable with that and that's why I mostly do uh, what I call urban photography where uh, any people in the scene is just a prop to say something about uh, the place I'm at. Does that make sense? Or am I rambling? So what do I use for my urban photography? Well, basically my main camera, which I'm filming this on so I can't show it to you. but. Let's see if I can find something. Nope. Oh, I'll have to leave Frank for a second. Ah, I've been meaning to. I've been meaning to make a video about this lens, but I never get around to it. Uh, I love this lens. It's a twenty-five millimeter f one point seven. Panasonic, uh, it is a nifty 50 of the micro four thirds system and you can see it's tiny. If if that had been a 50 millimeter uh, lens on a full frame body, it would have been huge, would have been like that. So what I wanted to talk about um, there was portability. You should uh, probably have something that's very portable. Oh. <laughs> For photography, I have been seriously considering buying the tiny uh, GX80 uh, instead of uh, the G80 that I have now because uh, the G80 looks like a uh, typical DSLR while a GX80 looks much more like the smartphone is thicker and you stick a lens on it but it is basically shape. And it is much more portable and I have been thinking about getting the GX80 or the GX90. I'm not sure yet for my photography. And that would also free me of course to have a B-cam that's not as awful as that one. I mean I could have, uh, I could have uh, switched camera and put uh, that one on the tripod and filmed uh, me doing with the camera but I really have no control of that phone so I don't really want to do it I only do it when I absolutely have to so you'll have to live with me uh, being lazy here and showing you my my lens uh, while I talk about microphone search and why I think portability is a key component of urban photography the key of course with portability is that you should travel light and I'm not sure why I'm dismantling this, this stuff but I'm dismantling this stuff while I'm talking so uh, with the lenses of this size I can bring like three four lenses in my backpack on the shoot and I am well set to capture everything uh, that comes comes my way, but of course if I'm gonna carry like three four lenses I want it to be as small as possible and that's why I've chosen to go with a micro four third system because I'm not paying that much uh, in image quality loss compared to APS-C because uh, micro four thirds, The micro four thirds sensor isn't that much smaller than APS-C I think 
maybe 15%, 20% or something like that. And uh, of course you get other benefits with the uh, with, uh, a Panasonic uh, camera like IBIS and stuff like that. So you can really push that uh, shutter speed down and still take sharp, uh, clear and low ISO photographs. Yeah, Micro Four Thirds is great for urban photography and for street photography. The problem with uh, bringing a huge uh, setup uh, when you go out and just want to take a few pictures is that uh, a big camera screams professional media, uh, you know, while uh, a setup uh, that fits lenses like this uh, says tourist, uh, amateur. No danger. You're not going to be showing. You're not going to end up on national television, uh, which you could have uh, ended up with if you had gone in front of the guy with a huge camera with a big kit build out and stuff like that. So, uh, portability is a really uh, important, uh, perhaps the most important uh, aspect of uh, both urban and street photography. In street photography, it's even more important because uh, as an urban photographer, I can stand back. I don't have to go close to people. I, I can stand back. Uh, I can take time. I'm not as constrained by moments uh, as a street photographer. I mean, a street photographer has to... Uh, exactly when that uh, moment happens, while well, I don't really have to capture moments at all. I can just stand in the corner of uh, a square, like uh, I talked about before, and take pictures of that square and uh, just wait for the perfect moment to um, express something about uh, the place I'm in. Anyway, that's enough rambling for me for today. I wanted to put out a video because I didn't put one out last Sunday. My brother was uh, in town and I can only really realistically make videos on weekends because I work uh, during the week and uh, weekdays is the only time I have a fair uh, chunk of time which I can waste on these videos. So I really wanted to put out a video today so I could keep feeding that YouTube algorithm with my low key efforts and uh, hopefully get better at this someday. Someday. Anyway, thank you for watching and um, I'll see you in the next video if you're so inclined. And if you're still inclined, do the YouTube thing and click like below. Um, maybe uh, click the subscribe button and the bell icon so you'll be told the next time I post a video. And uh, I just leave you with a question and basically ask you, do you do urban photography or street photography? Tell me below, I'm really interested. Do you make that distinction at all or do you think it's uh, completely arbitrary and I'm being silly? So I'm going to leave it here and uh, until next time, take care of yourself here. Bye bye.